Hi, everyone. Today we have something very important to talk about. There have there's there have been a couple of posts on LinkedIn, and um, I want to talk about an issue that I hear a lot of people talk about, and I think that there's some confusion. So I want to talk about it. So the subject is. Let me share my screen. Okay. And I'm still getting used to LinkedIn Live, so be kind. <laughs> okay, let's see. I want to share my screen. Hmm. Well, that's not working. Okay, hold on. We're going to get there. Hmm. Let's see. Well, when we do reliability scented maintenance, we talk about failure modes, and I'm experiencing one right now. Hi, Gonzalo Subranayam. Hi. Okay, I'm just I'm using when you go live on LinkedIn, you have to use a third party broadcasting tool. And I'm using one called StreamYard. So oh, here we go. I found it. Yes. Okay, hold on. I'm almost there. Okay. So let's see. All right, I'm almost there. I almost got it. Stick with me. Here we go. Woohoo! I got it. All right. So let's see. Hopefully, you can still see my screen. We're on. Um, we're on a. It's like a thirty-second delay. So I, I'm going to give you a quick introduction, and then I want to make sure if you can put in the comments that you can still that you can see my screen. Okay, so the topic of the day is where does reliability scented maintenance fit in to a reliability program? Now, you know, there's still, so reliability scented maintenance is, it's over 50 years old. The ASEAN principles are over 50 years old. And there still seems to be a confusion about it. But what I, what, what I want to set the record straight right now is that reliability scented maintenance, right? ASEAN is not, ASEAN is not a maintenance strategy. Reliability scented maintenance is a process that you use to figure out what kind of maintenance you should be doing on your equipment as well as some other default strategies. Okay, like um, failure finding our protective devices, like um, pressure safety valves, for example. So it's a process that we use to come up with a maintenance plan, right? So where does it fit in? Well, you know, I like to all, I like to think of things in terms of simplicity, right? Thank you, Subhan Riyam. Yes, you can see my screen. Okay, thank you. So when I think of RCM, I think of it as, I think of our reliability program as being a car or a vehicle and reliability scented maintenance is the engine, right? So let's just think about it and let's do this comparison. Let's say we've got our car and we've got our organization, right? So when it comes to our car, we've got the chassis, the transmission, we have a lubrication system, braking system, fuel system, we have the interior of the vehicle and we have the engine. Now let's compare a car to our organization, right? So when it comes to our organization and reliability, we've got a whole host of things, right? We've got planning and scheduling. We've got material materials, parts and inventory management. We've got workforce management, production, research and development, shipping, maintenance and default strategies. 
and so much more, right? There's more to it when it comes to reliability. But the point I want to make is there's a lot of stuff that if we get in our car to go somewhere, we need a lot of different systems working. Well, it, it's the same thing when it comes to our reliability. Reliability is not just RCM. It's it's not just planning and scheduling. It's not just our CMMS or our EAM. It's all of these things working together, right? So the way I think of if we compare our car to our organization, to our reliability program, it's like our engine is to our car, like our maintenance program and our default strategies are to our organization or to our reliability, right? Let's, let's talk a little bit more. So our engine is to our car as reliability centered maintenance is to our reliability program. So if we let's so let's talk about our engine, right? Let's say we've got an internal combustion engine. Well, we know we need the proper air to fuel mixture, right? We need electricity coming into our engine, right? And what we get out is power. So all of those things mix, right? And we get power out of our vehicle. Well, the same thing goes for reliability centered maintenance. So if you think of RCM as an engine, here are the inputs. When you do reliability centered maintenance the right way, you feed it. So you feed it with functions and functional failures. Now you might say, oh my gosh, why do we have to write functions? Well, this is one of the, one of the most overlooked issues that contributes to chronic unreliability because how many times do we implement, do we, um, maybe we buy a new piece of equipment and right from the outset, it doesn't do what we need it to do. Or maybe five years later, we need it to do something different than when we first bought it. If we don't take a step back and think, is it even able to do that? that can be a big cause of chronic failure, right? So my mentor, John Mowbray, taught me that reliability isn't a thing on its own, but rather it's sprinkled amongst all of the functions of a piece of equipment, okay? So here are our inputs. We're gonna input functions and we're gonna input our functional failures. And when we do our functions, that's where we define our reliability. Another thing we're gonna do is we are going to feed our engine with failure modes and failure effects. Now, another thing my mentor taught me is that we manage physical assets at the failure mode level. In other words, a failure cause. So when I use the term failure mode, I'm talking about the same thing. I mean, what specifically causes a functional failure, right? So we feed all of this in. And then the RCM decision diagram, it's, it's like the internal workings of our engine, right? We assess consequences, and then we put each failure cause through our RCM decision diagram, and we come out with an optimized maintenance program. See, that is our output. Just like we get power from our engine to make our car go, well, our output from reliability centered maintenance is an optimized maintenance program. And that means proactive, that means preventive maintenance, and it means condition-based maintenance and some other default strategies, like I mentioned, like checking our protective devices. And maybe we happen upon an operating procedure that is not, that's not written detailed enough and maybe that's causing a problem okay so all of these things are outputs of the rcm process right so so that's what i mean i'm going to stop sharing that's what i mean when i say that rcm is like the engine right so let's recap so when we do reliability scented maintenance this is not a maintenance strategy this is a process and it's a process that we use to define our maintenance tasks to define to define optimized maintenance 
and some of the default strategies. Hi, Vladimir. Thank you for joining. Okay. If you have any questions, just put them in the chat. Okay. But there's something that's missing here, right? Because if you're driving your car, right? I mean, if I just gave the answer. So your car is not doing much if it's just sitting in the driveway or sitting in the parking lot. You need a human being to drive it. Well, the same thing goes when it comes to reliability scented maintenance and our reliability program in general anyway, right? We need people. We need people to make decisions We need pe people to make decisions and here's a big one. Tell me if this is an issue for you. We need people to support our efforts, right? Whether it's reliability scented maintenance or any improvement effort, we need support, right? We need money. And we need other resources, right? Now, I hear a lot that it's difficult to get management buy-in, to get management on our side, to get support for our improvement efforts. Now, there's an art to getting support. And, okay, I want to share something with you. Hi, Edward. Edward, you're going to be joining, you're going to be joining me on the, on the challenge. And this is exactly what I want to share right now. Okay, so look, if you go to this URL, rcmtrainingonline.com slash lick, here's the thing. Reliability scented maintenance principles have been around for over 50 years, but they are still widely misunderstood and widely misapplied. When you implement ASEAN principles, even if you don't do full-blown reliability scented maintenance, you don't have to do full-blown ASEAN to capitalize on what the process can bring us. You can just implement some of the methodology because here's what, remember how I said it's like an engine? It's, it's, it lays the foundation, right? One could say that, I mean, I don't know, maybe you could say the chassis is the foundation of the car. I don't know. I like to think of it as the engine, right? Here's our foundation. You need to lay a good foundation for your reliability program. And there are, there are two keys to this, to laying a good foundation. There's the technical part and there's the human part because people, people have to design a good reliability program. People have to make decisions. And people have to support it, right? So if you're watching right now, then you're probably what what you probably heard, commonly heard the term a champion, right? And again, it doesn't have to be RCM. It could be anything. It could be any improvement effort. You can you can carry out the best analysis, but if you don't have support for that improvement process, it's going to go nowhere. And when you hear reliable that reliability scented maintenance fails, it usually fails because the results don't get implemented, either because the results don't get implemented or someone didn't implement it properly. Now, if you go to this URL, I'm starting a challenge tomorrow. It's actually, it starts 24 hours exactly from now. We are going to do a five-day challenge where we're going to meet live every day for about an hour. And we're going to go over 
a reliability principle. And then I'm going to suggest that you take action on something. It won't take you any more than like 15 minutes. This is, it's not designed to be this big examination. This is designed because I want, I want to get all of us thinking about the technical part of establishing a good reliability program. And embodied in that is optimized maintenance. We're gonna focus on that in our challenge, but two whole days of the challenge are going to be dedicated to this human part, right? Because if we're making decisions about our equipment, we're gonna have to ask people certain questions. We're gonna need information. And a lot of the time, you, you let me know if this is true for you in the comments. You let me know if you don't have all of the historical data that you need. A lot of times, a lot of times, this historical data, I don't want to, I hate to draw a line through it. So I'll maybe just do like a squiggle line. It's, it's often lacking. Let's do that. So you might think, well, oh, brother, what do I do now if my historical data is lacking? Don't worry about it. I promise you the most underutilized asset in our industry is our people. Because a lot of the information that you need to make reliability decisions, to make decisions about proactive maintenance, it's in the minds of your equipment experts because they are the people who work with the equipment every day. They are the people who know the operating environment, right? If we ask them the right questions, we can get a lot of what we need. Now, all of it, no, I, of course, not all of it, but a lot of it, okay? So the data is often lacking. So what, what do we do? We move to the people. Now, I'm going to stop and check the comments for a second. Let's see. Edward, sometimes getting to them to the table is difficult. Exactly. That's what, see this? Where am I here? I want you to go, Edward, you're already signed up. I love it. Everyone else, I want you to go to this link right now, osseumtrainingonline.com slash lick, because in this challenge, we are going to discover together how to get people to the table. Let's see. Ralph says, airlines must have a reliability program. Yep, they, they must. And they do. In, in fact, reliability scented maintenance was reliability scented maintenance was born in the airline industry, actually. Yep, Michael, yes, Ossium came from airlines. Pot of cast program. Let's see. Ralph. Oh no, Ralph has to go. Good discussion. Okay, that's all right, Ralph. We'll we'll go live again. Let's see, Michael says, agreed, most places have been historical da data is weak at best. Yes, okay. So, you know, most of you, so, okay. So a lot of times when I talk about reliability, I come from the perspective of reliability scented maintenance because that's that's my thing, right? That That's my expertise. But the thing about RCM is it has been around for over 15 years. In 50 years, the RCM principles have been around for over 50 years. Here's what RCM embodies. RCM embodies the basics of maintenance and reliability. This is the process that you use to derive your optimized maintenance program and some other default strategies. And when you do this with the right people, you can get 
you can get the information and the data that you think you don't have. Hi, Julio. Greetings from Spain. Okay, so I'm going to tell you this quick story. When I, the way I learned reliability scented maintenance, I was a US, um, United States Navy civilian employee. And I got called into my supervisor's office one day and he said, we needed to reduce maintenance costs on our equipment. And it came from above that we needed to apply reliability scented maintenance. So he said, go figure out what that is and how to do it. Well, I had no idea that that 10 minute meeting was gonna just set the trajectory for my life, but it did, right? And we employed reliability scented maintenance on a bunch of different equipment, but I want to talk about support equipment. And we, I'm going to tell you, we reduced maintenance by about, on average, by about 65% across our fleet of common support equipment, things like mobile air conditioning units and tow tractors and cranes and man lifts. Now you might say, some people think, oh, well, is OCM just used to reduce maintenance? No, it can reduce maintenance. In our case, when we were in, when we applied it in the Navy, well, we had a big opportunity to reduce maintenance because we were over maintaining our equipment. So if you're over maintaining your equipment, if you come in an organization where the mindset is the more equipment you do, the safer you're going to be, the more reliable you're going to be, and you're jam packed with all kinds of maintenance tasks, well, then you have an opportunity to reduce maintenance. Some organizations are living in reactive mode, right? Where they're not, they're hardly doing any proactive maintenance at all. So they have a ton of downtime. So you may increase your proactive maintenance costs, but you have a big opportunity to reduce your unscheduled downtime and reduce the number of chronic failures that you're having, right? So when you, if you do reliability scented maintenance, you don't have to apply it across your whole plant or across your whole fleet or on your entire aircraft or on your entire ship. Whatever it is, you can do RCM on anything. And you, it's not like you have to do it all or nothing. And let's say you're going to do RCM on a tow tractor. You don't even have to do it on the whole tow tractor. You could just do it on, on the engine. You could just do it on a particular engine component if you know you're having trouble with it. But the, what I want, the point I want to make is RCM embodies the basics of maintenance and reliability, right? RCM sets the foundation for your reliability program, okay? I'm looking for our foundation drawing. Here, it sets the foundation. These principles are, are over 50 years old. Okay, I'm gonna look at the comments and then I wanna tell you something. Let's see. Does it help in failure of VFDs? Manish, could you be more specific with your question? Okay, here's something, I wanna give you another analogy, right? And oh, so let me go back. Do you see this little character in the top right hand corner? Let's see, where, which way is it? It's opposite for me. In the top right hand corner of your screen. This, this is Larry the Licker. Now I've not lost my mind Larry is licking his equipment and no, not lost my mind. If you join the challenge, I'm going to tell you the story of where this came from. But I'm on a campaign that we all have to lick our equipment and we have to lick our equipment by employing the basics. So here, go to this URL, osseumtrainingonline.com slash lick, and I want you to sign up. So, okay, this is, it's a ladle, right? What do we use a ladle for? If you make a soup or you make a stew in your kitchen, you need a ladle. You need a ladle to scoop it out and put it in the dish. Now, we may have a wooden ladle, we may have a plastic ladle, but a ladle is a ladle. There are no new ladles. There's no electric ladle. I mean, it's not like you can go on Amazon and get an electric one, any kind of a crazy newfangled ladle. A ladle is a ladle. And every kitchen has a ladle because it's basics. This is part of the basics. If you're going to cook something, if you're going to cook a soup or a stew, you need a ladle. 
I mean, otherwise, how are you going to get the soup out of the pan, right? Here's another example. Let's see, it's the same thing for reliability scented maintenance principles. The principles are the principles. They are the basics. They do not change, right? How often we do a condition-based maintenance task depends on one specific thing, and it's a basic of maintenance and reliability, and that doesn't change, right? How often we do a preventive maintenance task that's based on a very specific principle. That doesn't change, just like this. It's a fork, right? Now, if you're of a different culture, maybe you use chopsticks. That's fine too, right? I had chopsticks. I should have brought them for my, my demonstration. But a fork is a fork. If you're going to eat your lunch or you're going to eat your dinner, you need a fork, right? So if you sit down and, you know, you, you have maybe something a little, like, like maybe you're going to eat some pasta and you have no fork, well, now what do you do? I mean, you, you could use your fingers, but... It, that's just not going to work, right? Now, you might have a plastic fork. You might have a wooden fork. This one is a metal fork, right? But a fork is a fork. There are no electric forks. There are no newfangled forks. And that's because this is a basic. When you go to eat a meal, you need a fork. It's the same when it comes to ASEAN principles because they lay the foundation for our reliability program. I have one more example. I have an onion. Okay, so I'm I am of my mother was Sicilian and she taught me how to cook. And if you don't when you're when you're making Sicilian food, if you don't have an onion, you're out of luck. Because if you want to make Sicilians call it gravy. Um, but it, um, most people say like marinara sauce or pasta sauce, like the red tomato sauce. Sicil Sicilians call it gravy. You need onion. And you need garlic as your base. And you sweat that in your olive oil. And that starts the flavor. That lays the foundation for your pasta sauce, right? If you're going to make chili, right? If you're going to make chicken soup, if you're going to, I mean, almost, almost, almost everything that you're, if you're going to about to cook something, you need an onion as a base. Now, there aren't any newfangled onions. There are no electric onions. There are no shiny onions. An onion is an onion, right? It doesn't change. And it's the same for the basics of reliability. If we don't have a firm foundation, it doesn't matter how fancy your CMMS or your EAM is. It doesn't matter how good your planning and scheduling process is. Because if you're not planning and scheduling the right maintenance at the right time, well, then that doesn't matter, right? Let me stop and let me look at the comments. Make sure the power is off. I must have said something, Edward, that you're that you're saying that. Ha ha ha, right. Okay. Svera. Oh no, Svera has to run. Okay, dinner's ready. Okay, got it, Svera. Let's see. Hi, Louise. Hey Louise, you're live with me. Okay. So that's the point that I want to make today, that I see too many posts and I hear too many people talking about reliability-scented maintenance. Do we want to do RCM or do we want to do CBM or do we want to do FMEA? So here, so let's set, let's set the rec record straight again, right? So when it comes to RCM... RCM is a process by which you identify the appropriate maintenance and default strategies for your equipment, okay? It's not a maintenance strategy in itself. It's a process to help you figure it out, and it is grounded in the basics, right? RCM, this lays the foundation. The principles embodied in RCM lay the foundation for an effective reliability program. Does that mean you have to do LCM on everything? No. But if you're on if you're on this call, right, if you're on this live right now, then you you probably have a good grasp of the basics. But does the rest of your reliability team, and when I talk about your reliability team, I'm not just talking about your reliability engineer. I'm talking about your operators, your maintainers, your logisticians, 
management, middle management, upper management, everybody needs to be on board. Everybody needs to be on board. When everybody licks their equipment, then you get a really effective reliability program. And that's what this challenge is all about. We're not going to cover everything in the challenge, but we're going to cover what it takes to implement an optimized maintenance program the right way and who you need to ask when you don't have historical data and how to get management on board and not just management, but everyone in your reliability program. Okay, so RCM is a process embodied in RCM. Watch this, Chiefs. Okay, reliability scented maintenance includes FMEA, FEMEA, it includes FEMICA, it includes CBM or condition based maintenance, it includes preventive maintenance, right? Like a CBM is a condition based maintenance task. This would be take an oil sample every month and replace the oil as required. Or maybe you have preventive maintenance. Maybe it's a timed task where you're just going to go ahead and replace the oil every 7,500 miles or every six months, right? Maybe it's based on operating time. And we've got some default strategies in here. RCM can identify a whole host of other things, not just maintenance, right? So I want you to remember that RCM is a process and you don't have to do it on everything. You don't have to implement it full blown. Now, RCM is a process that has been widely misused, right? People, a lot of people say, put in the chat if you've heard people say that RCM takes way too long to do, that um, you don't get the results that you need from it. If that's the case, it's probably because it wasn't applied correctly, right? Because when you apply RCM correctly, you can do it efficiently and you can do it effectively. And like I said, you don't have to do it on all of your equipment. And even if you pick one piece of equipment, you could just, you can narrow down your scope, right? How broadly or how narrowly you apply reliability scented maintenance depends upon the goals. What is your goal of the analysis? Maybe you just want to sanity check your current maintenance program. You can do, you can apply RCM principles just on that. So it's not all or nothing. But the key takeaway that all of this is based on a foundation. And it, when it comes to your reliability foundation, we're talking about people and we're talking about the machines, right? So in this challenge, I'm super excited. We are now less than 24 hours away. In this challenge, we're going to talk about the technical part of it as well as the human part. Now, I want you to put in the chat if you've seen the movie The Firm with, um, what's his name? The Hot Throb. He was also in Top Gun. Oh, gosh, what is his name? Tom Cruise. If you've seen The Firm with Tom Cruise, the movie, or if you've seen the episode of Friends where Ross wants ugly naked guy's apartment. Because in this challenge, we're going to talk about the technique that you can employ that was used in, in, this, in the Friends episode and in the movie The Firm to get people on your side. Now, I, I'm not out of my mind because I've done this, right? I mean, I, I've, I've been doing RCM for over 22 years, right? And I've, I've even helped organizations not even apply full-blown RCM, but just some of the principles, right? And there's always some naysayers, right? 
there's there's always been a time where you have to get someone from management on board or maybe management is on board but you need the reliability engineer on board or i don't know you need the logistician on board and let me tell you i've come across some pretty tough characters in my time and in this challenge i'm going to tell you i'm going to tell you two stories about about two people in particular where oh my gosh when we started talking about rcm principles they just wanted none of it. They were like, uh-uh, stop. I don't want to have anything to do with this. But then after they saw the results that were implemented, it changed their mind. So I think it's, you know, ASEAN principles have been around for over 50 years. So it's time that everyone understands that it's chock full of the basics of maintenance and reliability. It's what forms the foundation of your reliability program. It doesn't replace your CMMS. It's not like, do I, do I do that or not? Do I do planning and scheduling or not? What about workforce management? No, you need all those things too, right? Reliability-centered maintenance is not the answer to all of your prayers, but it's the answer to some of your prayers. Okay, let me look at the... Um, does it... Okay, Pratyush, thank you for your question. Does applying FMEA constitute RCM? It constitutes part of RCM. I love this question. All right, so let's write this down. So RCM consists of seven steps. The first four steps of the RCM process are functions, functional failures, failure modes, and failure effects. When you do steps one through four, you have already completed an FMEA. So if you do RCM the right way, you've largely satisfied the need to do a failure modes and effects analysis. Now, when we throw in When you throw in step five, which is we assess failure consequences of each failure mode, steps one through five together make up the FAMICA, the failure modes effects and criticality analysis, right? So once you do your FAMICA, now you put it through the guts of the RCM analysis, which is the RCM decision diagram. That's when you decide, am I gonna do preventive maintenance? Am I gonna do condition-based maintenance? And or am I going to apply a default strategy, right? It's when you also dis decide maybe I need to do no scheduled maintenance, right? Maybe I shouldn't do any scheduled maintenance at all for that particular failure mode. That's a default strategy, right? We, we, don't, we don't do something for every failure mode for all of our equipment. There are tons of failure modes that we run to failure. Okay, now you do step six. This step six is when you analyze each failure mode and you come out with what kind of proactive maintenance task you're gonna do. And number seven, those are your default strategies. That's maybe no scheduled maintenance. That's maybe uh, we need a new tool. That is maybe where you, you identify that there's a, a step out of place in, in a tech manual or in a procedure and you wanna fix it. Now, you don't go through all your tech manuals when you do RCM, but the natural discussion that comes up when you're identifying failure modes and failure effects, these latent failures or the vulnerabilities that exist in our equipment, they many of them naturally come up when you do this process with the right people. Okay, so I hope that answers your question, um, Pradyush that when you do RCM, you're already doing FAMIA. You're already doing FAMICA and embodied in this proactive maintenance uh, step is CBM. So you don't have to decide, should I do FAMIA? Should I do FAMICA? Should I do CBM? It's like one-stop shopping. It's got it all. 
all of the basics, all of the basics of maintenance and reliability are embodied in the ASEAN process, right? Is, is ASEAN all you have to do? No, of course not. But it's, it's a large part of it. Yes, Luis, RTF, run to failure is also a strategy. Agreed. That's step seven. Uh, that's a default strategy. Okay, let me see. There's another question. Um, okay, I'm going to show this one. Is it, I hope that's okay, Luis. Well, everyone can see your comments. Okay, Luis says people fear to implement ASEAN processes because they don't know where to start. What are the next steps? One day you could perhaps talk about the road to reliability. Okay, Luis, I'm going to put that on. Yep, where to start. I'm going to write it down. So I don't forget. In my next live, Luis, I'm going to talk about ASEAN, where do you start? So this is an excellent question. And I'm just going to very broadly answer it right now. Reliability-centered maintenance is not an all or nothing thing, okay? You don't have to think... When we get, we get overwhelmed as human beings, whether it, when it comes to reliability or even stuff in our personal lives, right? If, if you've got a big project to do, you have a big report you have to write, if you've got something big you have to do, when you think about it like, oh my gosh, I have to get this report done, and embodied in that is, well, number one, you have to find the files where you have your research. Maybe you have to ask Joe for maybe maybe Joe has an answer to a question that you need. And then you have to decide, am I going to do it in Word? What am I going to do it in? So there's like all these, a bunch of different steps that you have to do. If you think about it just and you start one step at a time, then you get it done. So when people think about RCM, I think they think, oh my gosh, I'll never be able to do it all. So, okay, so we're, I'm, that'll, be, that'll be the next live, Luis. Um, let's see, are there any other questions? All right, so while I'm waiting to see if there are any other questions, here's what I want you to do. I want you to, I want you to go to this link, awesometrainingonline.com slash lick, and I want you to join me for this challenge. Because we are going to really dig in. And, you know, when you say, well, where do you start? Well, we're going to talk about some of the basic principles, but we're not just going to talk about them, right? Each day, there's going to be a little thing that you can do, not long, like 10 or 15 minutes. But I want you to be able to start thinking about these principles in a way that you can implement them, right? I want you to have, I want you to see like, how you can dig your teeth in. And if you and if you already know these principles, that's okay too, because when you take the challenge, I want you to be thinking about the people in your organization who should know these techniques and these principles, but who don't. And if they did, it could really be a good, my mother used to say, a shot in the arm for your reliability program. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'll leave it there. Oh, let me check the comments one more time. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there for today. Um, I want you to come join me in this challenge, awesometrainingonline.com slash lick. And thank you very much for attending today. Uh, it's always a pleasure. I'm so delighted that I finally got LinkedIn Live. So I'm delighted with that. And I'm delighted that you came. And thank you for your questions. And I will see you next time where we're going to talk about RCM. Where do you even begin? So. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for attending today, and I will see you next time. Or And I hope that I will see you in the challenge. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.